So when we started down the SDN journey, you know, we were looking to get into a community and it's great that I have you guys here, industry leaders and thought leaders, coming into a community to make decisions and rally around solving the SDN problem in the cloud. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think it's it's amazing how many really skilled people is, is behind the communities. I remember that when we first time met in uh, in Paris two years ago, and we have same challenges, same same problems, and we just get it together and and uh, make it make the solutions work. So for me, community is very powerful. Yeah, I remember going to the user group and actually coming with a lot of questions. I was tasked with making a decision about you know which SDN we would choose, and I was in a room with <laughs> with you two guys actually asking you you know, what are you doing with this technology and how can we use it uh, to solve our problems? So it was great to be able to leverage that knowledge. And since then, two years down the track, you know, the community's flourishing. So it's really important for us going forward. That's exactly the point, right? That's how a community is created. You think about five years ago when SDN was very new, a technology that it was promising a lot of advantage for a network management system. We didn't really know how to start the best thing to happen is to actually get in together, start understanding what are our, uh, our needs, and then put it together in the table, say like, what is the best option? Let's build a community, and here we are. I know that when we were making a decision, you know, open architecture was a big problem for us. You know, we weren't coming in green fields, so how could we actually tie these, the, the old infrastructure with the new cloud infrastructure? So looking at open contrail was, how can we tie those pieces together? Was that something that was important to you guys? Definitely. Uh, if you look at the market, you see a lot of, lot of solutions, a lot of uh, softwares, and it's, you cannot test it, all of them. And it's, it's very difficult. And even our customers has different hardware, different switches, uh, routers. And we need to create one single uh, SDN or one, uh, one piece of software which can cover multiple boxes from multiple vendors, so open architecture is something which you really need it, yeah. And open contract exactly fits the requirements for, for this approach. You think about open control, you need to have a cloud management system, right? Open stack, we all approach open stack. So it was a perfect fit for open stack to find something also open sourced, also with a community that was a small, but look at look at us right now, after all that time. So it was, it was a perfect fit, it was a perfect decision, and together we make it better, we keep enhancing, and if we didn't have an open architecture at that level, how can you make changes, how can you improve it, how can you really understand it? That's no other way. So that was the best decision that we actually could have. So what was your criteria when choosing Open Contrail? And what helped you make the decision, and what decisions you know, did you have to make in order to go with Open Contrail? Actually, it's a little bit of what I just said, right? If you are approaching already an open source project, open stack, it makes totally sense to look for an open architecture, an open source project. And Open Control was the lead one, and we actually make a lot of effort to understand it from the very beginning. With other architecture, it was impossible, right? It was another black box. And you're trying to move your data center out of the black box with all something that you can actually understand. So it was a perfect, a perfect decision at that time. It was like natural decision. Yeah, for us, it was several criteria. The one I think is the open source, because when it's open source, you see how technology is developed. You can contribute it, you can extend it. And it's nothing what is developed behind the wall. If I look more in deeply, like uh, do the routing on the, on the existing uh, edge routers, multi-vendor solution, not use proprietary appliances from the vendors, but but uh, open hardware and the performance and scaling. If, if you look at the OpenStack, uh, you can see that the scaling, the hundreds of hypervisors and then the bandwidth throughput, packet per second, it's, it's very important and open content is the one of the best solution for this. Yeah, so, you know, the open source was a big component of us. So, you know, when we look at technologies, it's how much can we contribute and actually lead the direction or contribute into a project? So being open source was, you know, one of the key criteria is bring your own hardware and infrastructure. It wasn't a greenfield implementation for us. That was a, another big point that we could bring and use our old infrastructure, our existing legacy infrastructure to build out the new cloud. So 
that was another thing. I think you know, secure multi-tenancy was a, a, a big component for us that we could actually carve out different logical networks. Uh, we wanted VPC technology in AWS. We wanted that kind of experience where we could carve out different networks and then be multi-tenant. And finally, you know, using protocols, industry standard protocols like BGP and MPLS type technologies, we knew that you know, the hardware would be supported outside as these are industry standards in the network. So that was uh, a big component for our decision. And you know, finally, going to those user groups, and I think in Paris there was, you said 20 of us and people were from Juniper and were actually talking to people and getting the answers I needed, that was incredibly valuable. But I've watched the community grow over the last two years to, in Austin, you know, there's 250, it's a crowded room. Amazing. You know, it's just amazing to see that we're getting this support. We've got some, um, some big people in the room now that we can actually bounce ideas off. And we actually have the power to um, help move this product in the right direction. I think um, another thing, you know, even as I've seen the product mature uh, and, the, and the project mature is that we can actually go and solve new workloads like container workloads. So this was something we weren't even thinking about two years ago, but now there are solutions for Kubernetes, bare metal. So this is a, 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 a product that, and a, a project that's growing with us. So you know that's been incredible, incredibly valuable because not only can we solve OpenStack or cloud workloads with VMs, bare metal containers was incredibly valuable. Sure, uh, it's it's definitely uh, op- where was OpenStack three years ago? Yeah, so you, you never know what, what what will be the next technology <laughs> and if OpenStack will be the best way. But the Open Contrail still is the solution which it's tightly integrated with other tools. So when you want to integrate some enterprise legacy database systems, you need to get it on non-virtualized system and even the 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 containers, the Kubernetes, which we are using for, for, for our solution. If you think about what's been the success, right? You mentioned a few things besides the open source, the protocols. If you talk to your data center networking team, they do understand PGP. They do understand all the protocols that we are enforcing in open control. It's new for them. If you start talking today to virtual networking, virtual ports, virtual everything, they get like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. On the other hand, you start presenting, no, this is going to be PGP. It's going to be talking to your router's peers. Nothing fancy, nothing new. It's going to be encapsulated. They know that concept now, right? So with community effort, with the standards that they know, now they're convinced that actually this is the best solution, not just the open source part. Actually, the technology by itself and all the things that is built, right? Well-known programming language, Python, Java, C++. We all know those things work very well. 